students, researchers, welcome back. Welcome to our Smart PLS video series. This is video number five. In this video, we are going to study the measurement model assessment on the same research topic we have chosen before. This research topic will flow with us throughout our chain of videos. It is the factors influencing online banking use. In this video, we're studying the measurement model assessment. Specifically, we will run the algorithms, get the calculations and the figures on the structural model that we have already established in the last video and we are going to check on indicator reliability, conversion to reliability, internal consistency, as well as briefly in this video on the discriminant reliability. This video will introduce you to the algorithms of the measurement model, the beautiful figures that we get, and we're going to report these figures. The way that we can report, extract them from Smart PLS into Excel and then post them in Word document and report them for an article that, that, that appears to be published or simply in your master or PhD thesis. Okay, let's go into that demonstration. Okay, my fellow students, researchers, continuing with video number five. In this video, we are going to study our measurement model. It is the measurement model assessment. It's a very simple process. In video number four, if you remember, we have drawn our structural equation modeling. In this video, we are going to run the calculations to ensure we have good indicator reliability, good convergent reliability, and good internal consistency, as well as discriminant reliability. It would be worthwhile now to go back to that model. Let's see. We can go back to that model. Okay, I'll just remove that. I'll, I'll remove the, the calculations that I have already done. As you know, we are studying the factors that influence the online banking use. This is the actual system use construct, which represents online banking use. Okay, we have already drawn our model. These are our constructs. One, two, three, four, five, six constructs. And we have for each construct, we have several uh, indicators or questionnaire items as I show in uh, showed in video number five, four. Okay. So this is our model. In this model, as I mentioned before, I am developing this model, okay? We are, the, the foundation theory is the TAM model, which is the technology acceptance model, but we have including further constructs as we move on. However, for this specific video, our focus is only on the measurement model. Okay, only on the measurement model. This is a measurement model. The relationship between the construct and its indicator items is a measurement model. However, once we go on the relationship between two constructs, this is the structural model. This is step will come to incoming videos. All right. So now I showed you this this model that we have just to refresh your memory we'll go back to the powerpoint slides here okay to our powerpoint slides okay we have in our measurement model assessment we have to check for indicator reliability this is one convergent reliability this is two in internal consistency as well as discriminant reliability. And let's see. For the indicator reliability, 
we have the the loadings here let's let me let me run actually let me run the model and then we have an application of the theory right away into the model okay to run your model to run the algorithms on the model it's very simple we go into calculate pls algorithms okay and we keep everything as default path factor centroid we have only path here we leave it as default and we hit start calculations okay and here we go if we go back to the model here we can see the numbers here okay so if we go back to the powerpoint slides here it says here indicator reliability reflective indicator reliability has to be greater than 0 0.5 okay cited Holland 1999 okay if you see these are let's say the perceived usefulness as one construct and these are the indicators these are the questionnaire items manifesting manifesting or measuring this construct you see those loadings the loading figure we have on question one two three four five question one the loading level is 0 0.8 0 0.847 for two 0 0.880 for three which means we have a result or figures that are greater than 0 0.5 and this means that those items those items those questionnaire items representing or manifesting this perceived usefulness have a good measurement of this construct so they reflect good they have a good reflection or good representation of this construct okay this is for the indicator reliability reflective indicator reliability we have those we have also the same applies for this construct and the same applies for this construct as well as this this and this okay every construct here has its indicators showing a loading higher than 0 0.5 okay let's imagine that one of those one of those uh, indicators loading is lower than 0 0.5 okay is lower than 0 0.5 in this case if it is lower than 0 0.5 it has to be dropped so we simply click and just delete it okay remove it and then rerun rerun let me check for instance what which one is the lowest here okay i don't have one that's lowest let me let me take this one use three which is the question three or uh, item number three for the construct actual system use okay let me remove this one okay delete and then once i delete this one i have to simply rerun this uh, algorithms okay start okay okay and now i got the figures again so this one is just omitted how do i know that this has been omitted or deleted i simply go to the indicators here and you see this one use number three which is question number three is not in bold so this means that it has been deleted okay let me simply just uh, uh, get it back to where it was okay simply I add it here and let me run the calculations again so simply if you get a figure and usually usually some schools suggest that any indicator any indicator loading that goes below 0 0.7 it has to be deleted okay and simply you rerun this uh, this uh, calculations and that's why i preferred for instance i added here the trust construct i prefer always 
to have for each construct at least four or five items or five questions okay because sometimes you face it when you have loadings that are lower than 0 0.7 some schools just accept 0 0.5 uh, and up some schools just do not uh, accept 0 0.5 or suggest that you have a 0 0.7 and beyond any lower than that has to be deleted and in case you have one construct with just two or three questions you end up deleting one or two you end up only with one question which which is not very uh, uh, very good uh, reliability uh, measure or it wouldn't be uh, a good validity measure in this context okay let me rerun the calculations here okay Okay, these are the calculations again. And we have the figures, the indicators, reliabilities on every single indicator here. Okay, we haven't come yet to the numbers here on those arrows as well as the numbers inside the, uh, the blue circles. Okay, so for the reflective indicator, reliability has to be higher than 0 0.5. Kronbach alpha must be higher than 0 0.7. And what does it reflect on? What does it assess? The Kronbach's alpha assesses the reliability of the items in terms of the unidimensionality of a set on, of scale items. Okay? It reflects actually on the relationship between the indicators themselves, okay? It reflects on the relationship between those indicators, okay? On the relationship between those five indicators. Are they reliable? Are they reflecting the same, uh, the same way on this construct? Do they have a positive correlation between each other and this is all measured through Kronbach's alpha okay and how do I read that simply I go here in the constructs I change and this is the figure now showing in those green uh, blue circles so Kronbach alpha for this uh, construct which is the perceived usefulness is 0 0.906 okay see it reads that now the same for this one it reads 0 0.8 so all of these are above the standard uh, threshold okay so we have a good indicator reliability and also we have to uh, look for the row a latest studies we are suggesting that the row a reflects a better assessment of the reliability of the measurement model for row a let me see how i can get to that simply i choose it here okay row a we'll get to that very shortly r squared and then row a this is row a okay row a it's showing in the in the uh in the construct circles or the blue circles in here okay now we're going to report that in a bit okay this is for the indicator reliability how about the convergent reliability convergent re reliability of the measurement model has to be above 0 0.5 and how do i calculate this it's very simple for the conversion for the A ave which is the average variance uh, extracted representing the convergent reliability we simply take the loading of the indicator square it okay and then square all those loadings and then add them all together and get the average if the average is okay this is composite reliability okay if the average is beyond or greater than 0.5 it means that my measurement model has a good convergent reliability and this is what happens in this uh, in this measurement model that we have here 
okay you can see I go into the CR here the composite reliability I see that it is it is it has a high figures here but let me see how high is high okay now if I go into the AVE which is the average variance extracted representing the composite reliability here we find that our model here the measurement model meets the threshold suggested as per Bacosi and E1988 as well as Fornell and, and Larco 1981. All the figures here for the AVE as shown in the blue circles are reflecting a good com convergent reliability for the measurement model. Okay, internal consistency studied using Thilon Goldstein row. Okay. And it is known as well, known as well as the composite reliability, which is CR, and it measures the reliability of the indicators where values are between 0 and 1. CR must be greater than 0 0.7. Okay, and this is the internal consistency measure. That's the composite reliability. Okay, and... How do I see that? Composite reliability. I go to composite reliability and we see the figures. All of them meet the threshold of being greater than 0 0.7. Okay. And then last, I'll simply introduce you to the discriminant validity measure for the measurement model or assessment of the measurement model. The discriminant validity is called as well the vertical collinearity, okay? And it shows how every indicator is independent. If we go to the model here, we have in the discriminant validity, we study how this is independent of this, and this is independent of this. So we have to show that our questionnaire items are have good discriminant validity they can be discriminated from each other they can be differentiated so i don't want i don't want this construct for instance perceived usefulness to be measured by five questions that all of them lead to the same results no i have to have those different questions those questions as as discriminant as different measuring this construct but in a different way than the other one okay so this is sorry this is the discriminant validity uh, measurement or assessment how do I check for discriminant validity? We'll come to this uh, to, to this measurement or to this assessment in coming video number six. So we look at the cross-loading criterion and we look at the HTMT, which is the heterotrite monotrite. Okay. So overall, what do we look at? We look at the loadings. They have to be greater than 0 0.5 our indicators or item loadings AVE the average variance extracted has to be higher than 0 0.5 composite reliability has to be higher than 0 0.7 Chromebacks alpha has to be higher or greater than 0 0.7 so these are important fi figures for our measurement model if we have those figures in place as we have seen here, okay, we, we are ready then to report our findings or our calculations in this respect. Okay, so let's go into reporting our calculations. Uh, the process is simple, so simply what we have to do 
we have already calculated that okay so this is our pls algorithms this is our calculations we can go to the outer loadings these are the outer loadings to find to find the loadings on each item or each questionnaire item for each construct okay we can see here our variables okay our constructs one two three four five six and seven okay one two three four five and six here six okay six uh okay okay so simply what we have to do is that i have here already an excel an excel uh, document of sheet already open and already uh, to save some time what we go we go and do is we simply excel copy to clipboard excel format click on that and then simply we go into not the first row better the second row and simply paste okay so now as you notice here we have our three and four and five and six we have our variables here okay our constructs and these are the loadings okay very simple these are the items for instance the items for the first uh for the first construct okay let me take them as per the model that we have here okay so i'll simply take them as as per the model we got here the first one is perceived usefulness which is usefulness okay let me go into that so perceived usefulness this one okay those are the items okay copy and paste okay and paste simple okay and this is perceived use usefulness okay okay and then we get the loadings for perceived usefulness and then copy and then paste here okay okay leave this the ave and cr and i leave them for a bit later let's let's continue our report here the second one that we got here is the perceived ease of use okay so perceived ease of use okay let me leave a space here okay let me leave a space and then perceived ease of use okay perceived ease of use and this is use okay this is the one perceived ease of use this is ease of use okay so those are the items for ease of use and then copy and then paste okay and those are the loadings okay okay paste very beautiful uh we go into the third one here let's take a trust okay trust is the third one uh trust okay this is trust copy i leave also space one one row and this is trust okay and then for trust i have here those are the loadings okay copy and then paste uh, then we go into the attitudes towards using okay attitudes towards using and this is attitudes towards using and we go into here and then attitudes towards using copy and then paste and then let me just okay and copy and then paste okay and the last one here would be oh no i still have to behavioral intention to use and actual system use so bi so i have three indicators here and this is the behavioral intention of use okay and that would be the indicator items here okay and the last one would be the 
actual system use copy or copy and then actual actual system use okay use okay the the indicator loadings are those okay i'm done with this one now v all right i'm done with this one now i can simply remove those now i'll simply delete that okay and uh, what i'll do now i can maybe put those in bold i just like to make them look great i can do those in bold okay and then move into smart pls again and go to the algorithms and simply go into this tab the construct reliability and validity okay go into this one you find this table very beautiful very organized okay we we can see the Kronbach alpha we can see the rho a composite reliability and the ave i have i need the ave i need the composite reliability i don't need the Kronbach alpha I need those three and the average variance uh, extracted, okay? So simply do the same, Excel format copy, and just copy them in here, simple. And then we have for actual system, let's me start with the perceived usefulness, the first one. Okay, perceived usefulness, row A, okay, mm hmm I have row A and then uh, composite reliability. This is second and row A last composite average variance extracted. So simply I can, um, I can, I can do here simply follow the same format just to make it easy for me to copy them. I just put row A copy and then uh, paste here. Uh, row A and then uh, CR okay and this one would be the AVE okay uh, for the perceived usefulness simply let me remove the Kronbach alpha here perceived usefulness those are three okay copy V done uh, perceived ease of use copy done uh, behavioral uh, trust okay copy done uh, and uh, attitude towards using same behavioral intention and the actual system use copy paste okay so simply now I have the item loadings as you notice here. I have my loadings, the items for every construct. Uh, those are the questionnaire items. Their loadings. Go into the software here and go into my model. These are the loadings. Okay. The row A result or figure, the composite reliability figure, as well the average variance extracted, which is the AVE. All right, simply let me see how I can. Uh, simply I can, okay, and then put a, a line underneath this one. Okay, maybe then I can maybe delete this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can delete this and then put a... a, a bottom a line okay 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 simple i just simply go like this and just delete this uh, remove this delete this it just it, it looks better uh, i'll simply put also a line underneath and delete this um, i shouldn't have put this in the first place uh okay and then underline and then delete this one delete and underline okay and delete okay and this is underline okay look at that looks just good uh, 
you can simply if you want just pull these constructs just to make them look different okay and actually say okay now it looks just great simply copy move into word and i just call it table one uh simply i can actually uh references if i want i can insert a caption here and call it table 1.1 1 .1. Uh, measurement measurement model model assessment okay and simply click OK and uh, simply paste okay all right as you see here now I can further as I see here I prepared those just to save some time uh, all item loading greater than 0 .0 0 0.5 reflect indicator reliability. Uh, all average variance ex extracted, this is B, reflects convergent reliability, CR. And all composite CR, 0 point, indicates internal consistency. So simply I can put a small C if I want here, okay? Uh, a small C simply like this a small c or just superscript a small c let me view those as one all right and on also uh i can for Kronbach alpha here i didn't report Kronbach alpha uh i can i can if i wish i if i wish i could have reported my Kronbach alpha but in this case i didn't do it uh, Okay, I can report it if I wish. Um, however, if it's not reported, maybe I'll just remove this. Um, okay, I have the CR here greater. So this is C for the CR, the L average variance extracted. This can be B. Simply I put a B here and as a superscript etc and c and uh average and rho a is not here uh, uh represented i uh, simply if i have rho a i can maybe add a letter as well so simply you add those letters or footnotes to uh, provide further explanation and this table as you see here it is actually ready to go uh, into uh, an article to be published or a master thesis or a PhD thesis. Uh, so as you notice in this video we have in this video we have run the algorithms the PLS algorithms as you notice and we have uh, uh, provided uh, uh, an assessment of our measurement model uh, specifically focusing on uh, indicators uh, loadings on AVE and CR the composite reliability Kronbach's alpha as well as a bit on the discriminant validity measure that will come in the next video uh simply for the measurement model in order to have a good measurement model that is uh valid and reliable you have to get to get the threshold required for the indicator reliability convergent reliability internal consistency and discriminant reliability and do not forget that in case we have any let me okay so in case we have any indicator loading below 0 0.7 as the school that i follow it has to be uh, deleted it can be deleted some other schools just say no anything below 0 0.5 has to be deleted okay in case you delete that one simply you rerun the algorithms and check the figures again uh, in this function here 
you can change the figures showing as you notice in the blue circles okay to check on your composite reliability on the AVE etc etc uh, thank you for uh, for uh, watching this uh, this video uh, stay tuned for the coming video that will focus on uh, the discriminant validity measure for the measurement model and uh, it is reporting uh, uh, as well uh, for articles to be published as well as uh, master thesis uh, okay, stay, stay tuned for the coming video. Thank you very much.